Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 93. Nasdaq's down 13. S&Ps are off three. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex dash trading dash unlock.com that's forex dash trading dash unlock.com teddy cake stack what's going on brother oh not too much cloudy day in chicago but we have nice warm weather so it's kind of nice that's a beautiful thing no doubt well you know the weather broke here and i hope it stays this way i think we have a little heat but at um, least at night we get some cool temps we eventually we it's uh, right we get four or five degrees cooler the last the five days yes. which is like heaven to us yes so we're spoiled right now i mean we have like 60 degree weather at night and that's unheard of in september that so. is that's man sweet because we're only getting 70 yeah Hey, yeah. so currencies, where are we, where, we, where, we, where we are, I mean, you know, uh, you got the euro at 109, the pounds at 123, the yen's at 107, where are we going here? Well, right now we have a rally in the dollar index today, and I think that's really what's going on today, because after we spoke last week, we had a night, we were talking about how maybe we're coming to an inflection point with some divergence in some currencies, and yes. we got that signal. Um, right now, things are reversing gears on a daily basis. Now, I know you like the, the yen, so let's talk about that first. So last week, we reversed gears with the Japanese candlestick patterns um, sell signal, and uh, today, the market turned back to the upside. So we set a nice low yesterday in the US dollar yen trade, and overall, it's been bullish for the past, like, um, basically month as we ended the summer. Now, we're heading into the end of the fourth quarter, guys, so we have a lot of balancing that's going on, okay. and we're on the front of the fourth quarter. So I think right now what we have, especially because this week, there's really no big numbers. Tomorrow we have U.S. GDP, and between now and uh, the close of Friday, um, globally, there's some speeches and some mediocre or whatever, but there's really no um, economic numbers. Uh, the Royal Bank of New Zealand did not cut rates. That was kind of interesting, and I think that's because if you look at what's going on with the U.S. dollar, um, we have currently we have a little rally going on, but now we have the impeachment process that's starting for our president. You have in the U.K. Brexit deal. You have Parliament that came back and they got back online uh, yesterday. So yeah, that's right. I we mean, thought, we uh, thought we thought that would be the big news for October. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I think actually it's going to cancel it. I think what we have now is that geopolit geopolitics now are off the table because there's so much uncertainty. Okay. So how do you get direction when you have no leadership or question of leadership in the U.S. dollar, uh, no leadership or, or, or question of leadership or ability to move forward in the U.K.? Um, the EU is still stalemated because no matter what, nothing bodes well for them unless they can come to a deal, you know by October 31st, and they don't want to, you know, and I think that what we're coming to is now we're actually looking at where we can look at the technicals, you know, so I think that today is kind of like a bull trap going on with the U.S. dollar. I'd be very leery of it because um, you had uh, the, the, U the U.S. dollar yen that broke after we spoke last week and yeah. turned around today. The British pound is still lower today, even though it's coming off of its lows because of a strong dollar. I think that the pound dollar is definitely right now going to continue to be a bear for a little bit, you know, and it's because we don't know what's going on with the prime minister. Parliament's back in, in session. You got to remember when they got paroled, we had this little rally that's gone on. So you're getting a little lift, I think, in the dollar because of this. Sure. So it's not because of any real strength of numbers or real of the economy. It's just kind of like a rebalancing because of this geopolitical upheaval that's going on. Right. Now, hey, Teddy, when you look at the yen, right, so the, the high of the yen yesterday was 107.80. It comes down okay. all the way to 106.96, right? It started right. out, and then, so, do you look at that, that we would have to get over the 107.80 in order to basically say, go back to the highs? You know, I know this, I'm, yes. I'm getting in minutia here, but I'm just curious in general, do you know what I mean? No, actually, you, you give it, that's a good number, because I have uh, 107, uh, 107.75 and 108 quarter as two key. The, uh, okay. prices, if you will. Okay. So, and definitely, if we're back above, if we can sustain a trade above that 107.75, that means that we probably, now remember, we're in an, an uptrend for the past, like, um, month. Yes. We've yeah. just 
for the past couple of sessions. Right. So if this is a corrective move, meaning we're looking for a, another bullish opportunity to buy into, yes. today may be that day. Right. And that right. means that we're probably going to start to get above that first strike, okay, and then look for a challenge of 108 quarter. And if we get above 108 quarter, well, then we're looking to make higher move highs. You know, that right. means that this was but just a because this was a shallow retracement too, right? Now I can see. Yes. That. Yeah. It's yes. Interesting. So, so right. this is crucial actually where we are today because you know what happened sure. not yesterday but the, the day before that the yen uh, no, I guess it was yesterday. I mean, that yen sold off hard yesterday when we were open. Yes, it did. Yeah, it pounded we those new lows. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Now this could be a trap. Now, now remember. No, I'm with you. I, 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 that's why. I, yeah, cuts I, I, it's pretty cool how it's set up, actually. Yeah. Right. So all your weak shorts, I think they're they're going to panic right at that 108 quarter, you know, and all of your weak longs are going to start to jump in now with this if they're bullish, looking for higher move highs, but if they fail. And we come back and take out yesterday's low. Well, then that's a whole. Well, then everything's off the table. And I think that the major trend, which is still down for the U.S. dollar yen, we might be heading into fourth quarter, where the, the big trend is going to say, "Hey, the bear is back." Yes. You know. And this, as you said at the beginning, this is where the funding aspect and everything comes in at the end of the quarter, too. You know what right. I mean? This, right. Right. And we had the BOJ met last week, and they did nothing. Right. So. You know, and that's a big deal because now the BOJ did nothing, the, the Royal Bank of New Zealand did nothing this week, and by November they were supposed to cut the rates three times, and they've only done it once. You know, so, so that's a big deal. When, when we look at the euro, I mean, this euro, mm -hmm. what, what is it going to take for this euro to get? I mean, this thing looks like it just wants to go lower and lower, right? I mean, right, yeah. absolutely. Um, well, I think that we're coming into that critical support area of uh, 109 half down to 108 half. Yes. Um, it, no matter what, no matter how bad the economy is, bombs going off, oil, I don't care. You know, we've seen this bad movie before. It just seems to bounce all the time. Yeah, you know? right. Um, but there's also no reason to be a bull. I think that the Brexit is a drag going into October 31st. And if you look at the ranges, the, the euro has been a tough trade all summer long. Right. I mean, it's been, you know, a half. I've been trading the euro since the, the, the with the DMAR term became the euro, you know, okay. and on a slow day, whether it's busy times, bad times, whatever, you're looking at a 60, 70 pip range usually on any given day. I mean, you're lucky with all kinds of major news, pound yen or swimming and making new highs and new lows and the euro is sitting there in a 45 pip range. Which is Even if it's touching problem, off a yeah. little lower, higher high a little bit on a couple daily basis, it it doesn't do anything. There's, I mean, it's an it's an ugly trade. It's one of my favorite markets to trade, and I've had the toughest time trading it for months. I just wait for signals like we had last week, which there have been you know only a few over the course sure. of the past. Few and what Teddy's saying there, the reason, folks, is that when you have a, a much smaller spread. You know, guess what? You know, you're trying to get close to the top, trace to the bottom. Well, if you only get 45 ticks, man, I mean, it's a problem. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's... your risk reward right. ratio is out the window. Right, yeah. right, yeah. No, I no. mean, the exchanges and the brokerage houses are happy because they're making money no matter what. Bookie always, always gets paid. Right, the spread. Oh, my God. Sometimes right. Tommy, Tommy does a percentage on these spreads sometimes. It's like insane. Yes. You really, when you really see right. the numbers, right. it's, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, would you buy it at that price? Would you sell it? <laughs> they make both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Folks, you can read Thanks, Teddy guys. every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, have a great week, safe week. We look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Take care, guys. See you next week. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Stay right there, folks. I'm Tommy sure and I come you right back.